Hello, and welcome to Keep Information Systems Simple, video on the HLOOKUP function with inside of Microsoft O365. The HLOOKUP command is very similar to both the VLOOKUP and the XLOOKUP, uh, both of which you can find links to our videos on those in the description below. The HLOOKUP command is going to look through data that is sorted horizontally, and it's going to return matching data. And so in this scenario here, we have a tool called search, and then we have a data set called employee data, which is just an export of raw data. What we want to do is we want to be able to select an employee from our data validation or drop-down menu that we've made and have it return their address, their hire date, and their starting salary. Now, in order for the HLOOKUP command to work, the data that we are starting with has to be in the top row of the array we are going to create. As you can see, the names are not in the top row of this table. However, because we are returning the address, the hire date, and the starting salary, the name can be in the top row of that array. If we were going to search on name and wanted to return username, we cannot use HLOOKUP in this situation. So again, the HLOOKUP command is if the data we are matching is in the top row of an array that we are going to create. When you're doing this, pause and think about how you would do this as a human being, right? So if I said Nikki Schult, what is her address? You're going to come, you're going to take Nikki Schult, you're going to come over here, find Nikki Schult and return her address. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the HLOOKUP command. So let's get into this. Equals HLOOKUP looks for a value in the top row of a table or array of values and returns the value in the same column from a row you specify. Okay, so HLOOKUP, the lookup value. Now we're not gonna tell it Nikki because we want this to be able to change, right? We wanna select a different option from our drop-down menu. So we're just gonna select A2. And so no matter what data turns up in A2, it will then take that data over to our array. So A2 comma, the table array. The table array is where we're going to find both the data we are starting with, in this case, the name, and the data we wish to return, in this case, the address. So that is on our employee data sheet. And we can find the names will be in B3 through J3. And the data we want to return is the address. Now, I know in a minute we're going to do this for the hire date and the starting salary. So to make this easy on me and make my formulas written once, I'm gonna select the entire array. I realize and accept that in this situation that is gonna cause a couple extra cycles. However, when we're talking, you know, 10 entries, it's not that big a deal. Systems today can handle this extra little data. So I'm gonna say B3 through J6 comma, the row index number we wish to return. Now, this is the row index number of the array in which we just created. The array that we just created was B3 and down to uh, B6. So this has one, two, three, four rows in the array that we just created. Which row do we wish to return? In this case, we're looking for the address, which would be in the one, two, the second row, comma, false and you put false there so that it's an exact match and we should see Nikki is going to live at 432 Water Street. Press enter Nikki Lick works at 432 Water Street. Let's change this and see Matthew 128. We're going to check this real quick. Matthew 128 Maine. Okay this appears to be working but now we want to make sure that we do this for both the higher date and the starting salary. So what we got to do right away, though, is make sure we make some absolute cell references. And so we want A2 to be uh, an absolute cell reference. And we want our array to always be B3 through J6. So we're going to make that an absolute cell reference as well. And now, if we just take this formula, because the array includes all of the data, we should be able to drag this over. Now, the reason that it, it continues to return the address is because we haven't changed the row index which we want to return. So our higher date is row three. 
and we can confirm that employee data, our hire date is row three. And it returns something weird, formatting is wrong, easy change, set this to date. And Matt Smith at 128 was hired 8198. Matt Smith, 128, 8198. Starting salary, the salary is going to be in the one, two, three, fourth row. So we change this row index number to four and Matt's starting salary is $45,000. We can format this to dollars. The HLOOKUP command makes searching through an extensive data set much easier. Now, yes, it would be easy when there's only, you know, eight employees, 10 employees, whatever there is to go through there, but think about much larger organizations such as Microsoft, Amazon, UPS, FedEx, any, any Fortune 5 company, they're gonna have all of these employees and they're not gonna wanna search through all of that. So if you have to use Excel for a search tool, HLOOKUP and the data sorted horizontally, HLOOKUP will find it quickly and return data for you. That's our HLOOKUP tutorial. Thank you very much.